We're, We're Batman, Batman at 89. Hello and welcome back to Bat Minutes 89, the podcast where we look at Tim Burton's 1989 Batman film one soup sipping minute at a time. Uh, I am uh, one of your hosts, Niall McGowan. And I am John Parker, the other uh, one of the hosts. Mm. <laughs> the other guy. <laughs> <laughs> the other one, yeah, you know, that, that, that second guy, you don't know his name. <laughs> uh, and today we're here to talk about Minute 30. We're half hour in, half hour Woo! into the film. Uh, and minute thirty begins with um, bu- uh, a reservoir of uh, chemical runoff bubbling, mm. and it uh, it ends one minute later with uh, Bruce Wayne uh, asking Vicky Vale, "How's the soup? Hey, hey Cooper, <laughs> how's the soup? Uh, hey. <laughs> what more of a dramatic way could we possibly end this week than with a spoonful of soup? Oh man, and you th- you think that's exciting? You want to see next week's minutes? <laughs> holy, <laughs> holy God! It's like a roller coaster. Let me tell you. Uh, but yeah, so suppose we get uh, stuck in here now. Then um, let's do it. Yeah. So uh, yeah, we get this close up of uh, where we left off uh, last minute with the uh, the yeah, as I said, like the kind of uh, g- giant reservoir of uh, chemical runoffs is coming out of the draining system. Yeah, uh, and then we get the, which is very nicely done. Uh, a pack, you know, the several cards float to the surface, and uh, one of them, very tellingly, being a Joker card. Right. Is- Let me just say, I think because I grew up with this on VHS, right. I know I've watched it a million times since, but you, you know, it sometimes clouds your judgment when you've grown up with something. Mm. I didn't know they were cards until I started doing the show. <laughs> I thought that was just crap floating in the water. Yeah. I did not know they were cards until I looked at it, and then I was also comparing it to the original script, and I was like, wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> but actually, I'll, I'll, I'll actually right with you there, John. As well. <laughs> when I was growing up, for some reason, I thought there were floppy disks. I ah, thought like, yeah, oh, I he had a bunch that. of floppy disks in his pocket. <laughs> it's, like, it's only now, it's like, oh, no, it's of course it's the cards. So, yeah, that makes perfect sense. It makes sense. perfect sense. But on VHS, you can't. I don't know how old our listeners are. You can't see. That that's it. it's too fine a detail to be able mm, to tell, mm. but and in the original script actually it specifies because if you remember in an earlier minute I said the Joker um, was supposed to get shot in the face. Mm. Well, sorry, Jack Napier was supposed to get shot in the face. Yeah. In the original script for this bit, it specifically says this: <clears throat> as deadly toxins gush forth, other cards from the deck swirl past a nine, a deuce, a queen. And finally, a Joker shot cleanly through the face. Oh. So it's hit his cards as well somehow. Mm. <laughs> but well, it's no, meant no, to no. Uh, echo his own face. No, I think that was... Uh, uh, that, that was we brought that up in an earlier minute uh, when he's in Grissom's office and he has the Joker card there. It yes. specifies in that original script that it's already been shot through the... Uh, Ah, that's it. Yes, I, I think that. we were talking about like, oh, maybe he got shot, and that you know the deck of cards stopped him. So it's, and that would explain Grissom saying, "Oh, it's your lucky deck," but yes. that's not a thing that they get into in this film. But it seems to be inferred information. Well, that makes more sense because mm. I was thinking to myself, I'd completely forgotten about this conversation <laughs> because uh, I was thinking, how the hell did that get hit too? <laughs> <laughs> but that makes more sense. So now he he has become the card. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, well, actually, we don't know that because we don't know who this is. Oh, yeah. but uh, yeah, so it would seem that someone is under the chemicals uh, with a prop hand that's been fixed <laughs> into a rigid shape, and they're just poking <laughs> it up above the water. <laughs> because it, as cool as cool as this is, it is blatantly oh, that's a prop hand. Like that's not a guy's actual <laughs> hand. As well, um, it, it's straight out of a horror movie. This isn't it? it it's quite ridiculous and camp. Mm. But I love it. Like, oh, it's amazing. Yeah. Well, as I say, we just had the whole House of, Co- uh, House of Wax thing last week. Yes. So, or not last week, the previous minute. So, yeah, if this is going for, I don't know if it's, I'm sure someone out there will be able to tell us, but if it's going for a sp- specific film or mm. if it's just a general horror movie trope of like the monster returning with a hand emerging from, you know, where you once thought it was dead, now it's yeah. back kind of thing. So. Well, again, that ties into we were saying there were some. Some things we thought Burton was uh, putting in from Frankenstein before, mm. which I know Frankenstein doesn't, the monster doesn't do this, but it illustrates the same thing, like a rising from the grave. Oh, yeah, for sure, for sure. 
but uh, that's all great. I just wonder why they couldn't have just got a guy under the water <laughs> and had his hand burst up. Because that seems very, it's so rigidly done. And it doesn't move. It's like his fingers are fixed in place. And it's like, oh, yeah. When I was a kid, didn't mind. It's like, oh, it's awesome. But now it's very much like, <laughs> I mean, that could have been done better. I mean, it's cool. I like. I appreciate it. that as a still. If I had that as a picture on my wall, I mean, oh, yeah, it's great, cool. isn't it? But as a practical piece of moving film, it's like that's a bit rigid. It's, well, uh, especially because it actually rotates slightly, but the fingers haven't moved an inch. <laughs> <laughs> They've just turned it on a stick or something. Mm. Noticing as well, the um, of course the fingernails are black now from the chemicals. But I well, I, I don't know if it's. The, I think it's the have the chemicals burnt. The glove onto the fingers. So I thought, would you, see, well, I took it a completely different way, and I've always, mm. I've always assumed that the fingernails were green, like his hair. Well, it could be green. It's, it's kind of tough to see in that lighting on there. Yeah, on because this. fingernails are, they are essentially, yeah, you know, it's one of those things. We're gonna, I'm not gonna show off my scientific knowledge by <laughs> any means here, but I think, like you know, like much, uh, like fingernails are, they are, it's, it's hair that's been, yeah. You know, over over time, it's morphed into a fingernail, basically. Yeah, yeah, it is the same. So you might be onto that then. Although that that would that would go against my thought then of it being the glove. Yeah. Because the bits of the glove are missing. I noticed, and I was like, maybe that's something to do. Mm. It could be green again. Because I was going to ask, are his are his fingers, well, his fingertips, that color later on? That's something I've never considered or even thought of. Yeah, well, that's the thing <laughs> I'll have to keep that. an eye out. Yeah, because there is a bit. Because I, I was going to say like. Throughout the rest of the film, you'll note, um, you know, the Joker's always wearing, not that I'm saying this is the Joker, we don't know who it is, <laughs> but um, we do note that the Joker's always wearing gloves. Ex- yeah. I think there's one scene where he's he's applying his makeup and he's got the gloves off. So we'll have to keep an eye out then. It's like, oh, are the fingernails green? Or are they black? Or like, what's oh. going on there? So We'll forget about it by the time that scene comes around. Like, I forgot about the cards. <laughs> <laughs> It's it's a lot of work this damn podcast. <laughs> well, this is one of the things now, like because you've but now with you saying that though, that sounds to me like oh that makes sense that it's actually yeah, the, the gloves are burnt off onto his fingernails. But no, his, my entire life, I was like, no, they're they're green like his hair. I'm assuming that's what they're going for. But well, you say that, but I what you've said to me has made me question it. I, I'm th- I'm thinking oh the the whole fingernails are hair thing makes sense. <laughs> we both flipped our position. I think. Uh, <laughs> It's the only iteration that I've ever seen. And I even Googled it to make sure. Uh, like, are, are the Joker's fingernails green in general? Mm. And I can't see anything that backs that up. I think it might have been... If, if, if we're to take it, although they are green in this, it's that that's a Tim Burton choice. Or like, yeah. you know, whoever would have been in charge of that element. Although I'm sure Tim Burton would have had to be the guy who went, yeah, that's where we're going. Well, yeah. It fits. It fits with his aesthetic. But... Um, yeah, the one one thing like it's, it's, it's you know beyond the fingernail debate now is another thing I've always been curious about hmm. is that like we see Jack Napier falls into the vat of chemicals and then this is however long later and this is his hand finally emerging from a reservoir. Yeah. Now the chemicals we saw in the vat looked like static. They looked like that's just a vat of chemicals. Yeah. But like at what point? Did they get? Uh, at what point did they get drained off into this thing? So, and then the whole time was it, this could have been minutes, it could have been hours, it could have been like t- ten to twenty minutes before. Was there? A, I'm assuming there was a drain at the bottom, and yeah, that's, yeah, it must flush out into this sort of reservoir. Yeah, but then is it in constant flux? Like, is there like pipes leading into that vat, and it's always? Because I guess you do see it kind of has a circular. Well, they have the bubbles when he settles yeah. in. You see them kind of circling. So was, oh, I are, thought they just did it periodically, like you know, like you drain it once a day or something. Yeah, but if if that was to happen, though, you think that Gordon and the cops would have been like, "Well, don't drain it. We're gonna need to recover the body." But again, Gordon's like, "Nah, forget it." <laughs> yeah, he's lazy. We've established this. He's terrible. Yeah, he's almost as bad as Eckhart. <laughs> <laughs> but at the same time, it's like, well. If the if the thing is in constant flux, if we're not we're not seeing it, but there's always a pipe leading into that vat, and it's always draining out, it could make sense then that like oh maybe it got sucked up into the thing instantly. But I mean, it looks too <laughs> a bit too static like that for me. And even at at that, how long was he under those chemicals? Yeah, yeah. You know, it seems like he would have drowned. 
And it's it's uh, I've always just been curious. Like, is this you know within the pipe and the way down was his head bobbing up and he's like Ooh, like gasping for breath and stuff? Or because <laughs> he seems to me like he's only just coming to. Mm. Like the way that hand's moving, he's only just, let's say, awoke. Yeah. So he must have been under the whole time. <laughs> that doesn't make any sense. Yeah, it just seems like that's, you know, it's a, the whole principle of a man falling into a vat of chemicals and emerging as a, like a, <laughs> a, a, a homicidal clown is, you know, <laughs> is pushing it. But even it is just like, well, you know, what was going on with this vat of chemicals? Because even in like you know the the killing joke and the the, the the man behind the red hood and stuff, it seems to be it's it's already the reservoir he's jumping into. Like the mm. there's already a flow of the chemicals been dumped out, and that's how it happens. But this seems to be like it could be dating back to Tim Burton being like, I want it to look like potentially I want it to look like the the thing in the House of Wax. Yeah, and um, uh, then that just it, it it creates a logic loophole of like. Well, is the is the thing constantly draining, or is you know was it just like oh he's under there for like twenty minutes and then they drained it, but he was uh, he was under it the whole time. But then how did he survive that? Like it doesn't make any sense to me. You know what I think? I think Tim Burton just didn't give a damn. (laughs) (laughs) He just thought this looks cool. Mm -hmm. We're doing it. But uh, also, you know, the the thing like once we see uh, the Joker later on, uh, spoilers. Because if he's under there for that long, I'm always thinking as well: is it like ingesting the chemicals? Does that add to his insanity? Because you usually think like it's 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 just seeing what's happened to him that's made him snap. But this could be like, oh no, the chemicals themselves are actually like kind of seeped into his system. That's completely screwed up his head as well. Yeah, yeah. No, I've always thought the chemicals contributed to that because he was a little bit crazy, Mm. but he didn't. He wasn't fully over the edge. Yeah. I mean, you could say that the whole betrayal and then almost dying, and that, that, I, that doesn't work for me. I think the chemicals have messed him up mm, mm. in the brain. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it would make a lot more sense because, you know, he, the, we, we don't say, you know, within the, the, you know, the killing joke, you see a flat out of guy snapping. Like you see the, the mind going because when he mm. sees his face, that's what sets him off. But in this one, we just, we, you know, well, actually, no, in this film, it's, it's, it's you in, do get a similar scene. Yeah, he does see the face, and then that snaps him as well. But uh, well, Spoilers. actually, we'll leave that until that exact minute's coming up, like mm. next week or the week after. So, um, uh, yeah, you know, it'll be linked into like, well, his vanity is partially what drives him insane. Because he sees like how horribly, de- you know, deformed oh. or mis- disfigured he's become. I didn't. I didn't know vanity was in this movie. <laughs> well, yeah, well, she works so well with Prince, you know. <laughs> yeah. like got her little bit part. <laughs> so. Oh, obscure joke. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, anyway, no, that's always – this could be a thing. Like people uh, – I encourage you to write in on the Twitters, on the uh, on the Facebook group. What What's your take on both the, the fingernail debacle and <laughs> how long – like what was, what was going on with this chemical dumping system and how long was Jack Napier supposed to be in the thing? Yeah, these are the important questions, people. We need answers. This is genuinely a thing. Like, I've been always wondering this. This is now my time to be like, right, finally. I'm gonna, <laughs> someone's going to listen to me complain about this. After all these years. <laughs> so, yeah, we, we cut now to Knox at the office with Vicky. Uh, and he's, he's on the phone trying to convince somebody, which I'm going to guess it's Gordon. I mean, I don't know, mm. uh, to give him the scoop on, uh, on what's happened. Uh, but the person on the other end of the call tells him that uh, Napier committed suicide yeah. and that he wasn't thrown in by a giant bat. Mm. <laughs> so, I do. I, I love. I love his his delivery, though. I just, even though the the whole thing, but then particularly the line of suicide, because it's like, yeah. oh, so 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 if there is no bat, then who 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 dropped this guy Napier in the acid? Suicide. Like, <laughs> but it's yeah, uh, it's not like a disbelieving delivery. It's like. It's more like, oh my god, that's worse. Mm. <laughs> Although th- th- this then this brings up another thing because um, Knox specifically says acid, whereas mm. other points it's always referred to as chemicals. And like um, to me, I always think, uh, oh well, acid like sulfuric acid, like the uh, the alien blood acid. Yeah, and that's probably like, oh, you wouldn't survive that. Like that would kill you instantly. Well, that's why I thought they didn't go and get the body. That was my theory, wasn't it? That they mm. they assumed it was acid. Yeah, yeah. But I think uh, at the end of the film, though, the Joker himself says to Batman, like, oh, you dropped me into that vat of chemicals. That wasn't easy to get over. Or something aligned to to that effect. Oh, Uh, wait, I've got an idea. Here's what I think. I think it is acid. 
But when Napier was running around, twirling all those uh, valves and hitting all the switches and just messing everything up, maybe he altered the composition. He added water or something that, like, diluted it. Yeah. So it wasn't full on. It didn't completely erode his bones. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, The thing is, I did... This got me thinking, though, of, like... Oh, somebody at some point is is bound to have been like, oh, what what are the what's the chemical composition that created the Joker, and uh, I find like not a lot a lot of it, but apparently in um, the Batman story, Funny Bones, oh, they actually do give you the composition of what it is, and I've got it right here. So, uh, oh. <laughs> so uh, Batman says um, within that uh, it's eleven percent sodium hydroxide, thirty four percent sulfuric acid. Five percent chromium solution, zil- zinc sulfide, doped oh, with geez. copper, which gives it its green glow. And then he's like, "There's something else in here that I can't put my finger on, uh, and that's what's what. That's the the key to what's you know created I'm not, this, this thing." I'm not going with this. Uh, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> I'm not happy with that. I I don't like it when people just go and, and invent things like what's in the chemicals. No. no. It could be anything. Who cares? Whatever. Use your imagination. Don't you don't have to write a whole story trying to explain everything. It's like a prequel problem all over again. Well, I think to be fair to this though, this is um, it's more like an aside. Like it's uh, you know, it's it, it, may, it makes sense that Batman will be like, "Hey, I'm gonna try to figure out you know what's what's going on." Well, he would. Him. He yeah. would investigate it. But I mean, from a writing standpoint, <laughs> mm. we but, don't need to know. Yeah, yeah. but. Uh, yeah, within that, he does a um, he g- he gives you what the uh, the chemical rundown because Batman's investigated that to see if there's presumably if there's some angle he can work by knowing what's in the thing. But uh, nope. I guess I guess they are still retaining the mystery though of having them say like, well, there's something else, but mm. I don't know what it is. So <laughs> you still do get a little bit of uh, madness. So well, could it be connected to something the Joker uses later on in gas form? Uh, Oh, could be, mm. although we think uh, we s- well maybe potentially because uh, yeah yeah we'll get to, we'll get to that in the relevant minutes, yeah so. I didn't want to approach it too much I thought I'd tease it because <laughs> the answer to that question maybe no it is not <laughs> <laughs> but uh, uh, but, it, um, but the, uh, I think the next bit then I just wanted to say because um, we 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 took notes on this and I want to tell people it doesn't work uh, <laughs> Knox tries to record Gordon or whoever he's talking to. Over the through the phone with a, a dictaphone in hand, <laughs> and uh, we've tried that with guests, and let me tell you, it doesn't work. All right, no, <laughs> no, avoid that one, everyone. It's potentially the worst way to record anything ever, <laughs> so, <laughs> particularly in 1989. So, oh god, that, oh, those dictaphones would be terrible. I love it when you get a bootleg of a gig for a band. I say love it, I hate it, <laughs> and um, it's clearly just someone at the back of the. Uh, of the hall or whatever with a dictaphone like hidden under their armpit mm. recording the show <laughs> and someone sells this mm. and you listen to it and you're like i cannot hear a damn thing yeah uh, so I've, I've actually come across though some you know bootleg things though that actually sound like really really good but there's usually surrounded by like you know 10 minutes of like <laughs> yeah <laughs> so you can't really like if you want to put it on like a mix cd or something or oh, as you used to do back in the day. Oh, uh, back in the old days. But you don't have to have to tell people like if you're gimmick to someone, it's like, oh, by the way, there's a whole <laughs> mess of noise uh, before it gets to the good bit of the song. So, <laughs> well, now that we're editing geniuses, we could just pop it into our uh, audio editing software and chop that out. Yeah. <laughs> that is true. That is true. So, uh, um, but uh, b- back in the minute, <laughs> um, v- Vicky, she's been doing a lot of groundwork here, hasn't she? She's she's doing better than Knox. Mm. Like she's been working on that map, uh, figuring out if the bat has, as she calls it, some kind of flight pattern. Mm. Which again, they seem to think he's an actual bat yet again, which is a bit weird. Yeah. Um, well, they seem to be at least assuming like he's gliding around or something. Anyway. But, yeah, um, but we've we've not seen him fly or no. hint at flying. I assume that's for budgetary concerns. <laughs> oh, then course. again, the budget on this movie. <laughs> mm. But I think even that though is just like well. I think there's a thing actually coming up next week where they have to drastically change the script because yes. they're like, "Wait, you think we're made of money? No, no damn way." <laughs> yeah, I mean, if if you had him flying around every other scene, that yeah, that might cost a bit much, and then there'd be stuntmen involved. 
It, yeah, it'd be too yeah, much work. So you have to wait until uh, the good old Nolan years before you get a proper frequently gliding Batman. But uh, mm. Although I love that. I love that in the films. I love that they put it in the Arkham games because like, I could play those games for hours just gliding, just gliding <laughs> around the city, just been like, oh, this is awesome. Oh, well, here's the thing. You know? I mean, I've seen all the movies, but you know, off the top of my head, I can't recall. Is there any movie where Batman does just fly around like the Arkham games? Uh, well, I mean, in Batman, it's like, the same principle, I'm assuming. It's the little like electric thing that goes through the yeah. the memory fabric that holds it rigid in place. I'm assuming like that's what Arkham's getting that from. Yeah, They're he doesn't getting it from glide Batman across again. the the cityscape though, does he? Across the rooftops? Oh, he does a few, like not like, you know as much as in the games though. But there are yeah. in begins. There is a fair bit of him gliding around and stuff. Cause I just remember because it, it looks awesome. <laughs> but. Uh, uh, and then I think it does, once predominantly in the Dark Knight. Well, actually, a couple of times because at the end when he's going into rescue, he glides over to get in. And then oh the, yeah, he does do that. But again, it's more. It's I don't all know, the business I know he, in uh, Hong Kong as well, where he's that's how he gets into that building to get in uh, the game. Though I know it's gliding technically, but it comes across more like more like flying, like mm, a bat. Yeah. Whereas yeah. those, it's like he's just sort of. It's more of a controlled fall. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's, that's a thing, actually. We can, uh, we'll be, you know, when we get to Batman Returns, because he, yeah, he yeah. has the, the kind of weird glider thing and that as well. So, yeah, yeah. That's a thing we'll be getting to in uh, some point next year, potentially. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I'd just like to add as well, while we're talking about Vicky there, um, she's got a rather fetching pair of glasses. Mm. I'm, I'm liking that look. That's a good look. But she removes them. Yeah. <laughs> I'm wondering, though, because it's the same. Remember, we were saying the last time we saw Bruce Wayne in the Batcave, he was rocking very similar glasses. So I don't know if it's yeah. just a trend. This is one of these, like, oh, his glasses are in this year. So everyone <laughs> don't, oh, do don't even th- have lenses in them. They're just like, oh. <laughs> I was going to say, yeah, do you think they're just lensless uh, fashion glasses? They could be, but she doesn't seem the sort to care too much about that. Uh, see, I know I'm... Uh... I would, I would, you know, as a, as you should do as well, John. Would, would take offense to that as a, as a glasses needer. I'd be like, you can't just, oh, you don't know, you people just wearing them for style. You don't know the struggles of the glasses wear. Yeah, w- without my glasses, I can literally. This isn't exaggerated for comedy. I can see about two inches in front of my face. I'd say. <laughs> but um, uh, but yeah, to be, to be fair though, she does look pretty good in them. So, and you oh, notice yeah. so um. Knox seems to be wearing the same tie he yes. was wearing the last time we saw him. But she's got the whole new outfit on, so you can tell the difference right here. Of like, oh, she's a bit more glamorous, a bit more, uh, you know, not a, you know, not vain or anything, but just more mm. like, oh, she just makes makes sure she looks well. And Knox is was like, no, he's just a poor reporter. Like, he just doesn't have many ties in the wardrobe, so he just has to stick on yeah. the same things every day and stuff. So I get the impression he's the kind of guy, he's got two suits, two shirts, Two ties. Yeah. Maybe one pair of shoes for work. <laughs> <laughs> one, one pair of shoes for relaxing. That's mm. it. Yeah, but uh, as, as Vicky lays out this map of Axis chemicals, it seems like Axis chemicals needs an entire map as well. <laughs> but, yeah, that, that was a bit weird. <laughs> mm. But I did find, apparently in trivia, uh, the map oh. of Axis chemicals was actually a map of the Capitol Hill neighborhood in Burnaby, British Columbia, Canada. So, oh yeah! Don't know why they went for that, but they did. So <laughs> there maybe you they go. thought nobody will spot this. <laughs> we'll use that one. It literally must have been just like whatever maps closest. Like get us a map. It's like what 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 kind of one you need? Just whatever one's next to you right now. Just use that one. <laughs> whatever the 1989 equivalent of just googling it and picking the first one that comes up on image search. Yeah, <laughs> like, uh, yeah, that'll do. Just use that one. Mm-hmm. But um, then we get. Uh, you know, uh, you know, Knox is congratulating Vicky on her, like, oh, the, 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 on the moxie of the investigating that she, she, uh, she's been doing. And then mm. tries to get his, um, his whole, like, oh, you know, I'll take you out to dinner and then we'll we'll go on the trail. Uh, and uh, she uh, announces, though, that she's got a date with uh, <gasps> with Bruce Wayne. With Bruce. Oh, my God. How could she uh, not go for Knox and his smooth moves? So subtle. <laughs> so subtle there, Knox. Yeah. Well, that, that's the thing now. It seems like, because this, this whole interaction here of like him very blatantly, the whole like, oh, Wayne, oh, the guy's a stiff. You know, he's a rich stiff, but you can do better. And um, yeah, who better? Who? Knox? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> too, it's like, but Knox, this guy, I don't know if he ever got that grant, but the guy was just <laughs> giving you a grant. But, You've um, got to admire his persistence, though, because I think he knows. He knows he's hitting above his weight. Like, she's much better than him. And he seems to think, well, I'm not going to get anywhere. 
but I'll I'll give it a go anyway. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Although I think though, like I'm not one of you know, I'm not gonna blame either party outright because I would guess both of them would be at fault. But like, this is a this is probably like the scene where Vicky should have a word with Knox and be like, look. It's you know <laughs> we're not gonna happen. I'm not attracted to you, okay? Because <laughs> he's gonna keep if he's gonna keep doing this, and it's gonna be unprofessional, and like, it might be that like, and then you know other people yeah. would argue like, well, it's up to him to just read the signal and just go, all right, she's going out with this guy. I've lost. That's the end of that. But he's he's not that kind of guy. He he doesn't understand. <laughs> he is a man who is persistence personified, as we see. And now he's not even he's not even got Eckhart the bug anymore. So he's gonna go for someone else. <laughs> I don't wonder I mean, if, there, if there was ever a, a, they ever considered doing a scene of like Knox hearing about Eckhart's death, and just oh. been like, "Oh, he's he's dead." <laughs> like Max, That'd be good. my good buddy Max Eckhart. Oh no, uh, good buddy. <laughs> the thing, like, they, they, they had a, they had a, they shared screen time. They had a relationship. It would have been nice to see mm, Knox. But a like, relationship, <laughs> that's stretching it. But yeah, they had a, some kind of a connection. We'll say. Mm, yeah, uh, but. In the original script, there's more dialogue here of uh, of Knox trying to warn Vicky off Bruce because um, he gets the paper's society editor to come over and uh, explain that, oh, Bruce is known as Mr. One-Nighter because yeah. that's how long his romances last. Like, uh, so don't be going out with this guy. It's, uh, but Vicky doesn't buy it. I think she knows, she knows Knox is just trying to uh, <laughs> sway her and win her over. Oh, yeah. This, this is all... Um... Yeah, there was obviously at some point there was like I'm assuming maybe it was more of Tim Burton's involvement of trying to make this Bruce Wayne more of a you know a, a loner kind of like mm. a loner outsider like Tim Burton's characters tend to be because yeah the original Sam Hamm script is like oh Bruce Wayne is the you know millionaire playboy and uh, yeah. you know he's, he's he's got away with the ladies and as you said there you know Mister One Nighter and all this kind of thing but uh, as we've seen like earlier like we were saying. Oh, like it's, you know, it's, you know, considering that that's the way that we know Bruce Wayne is usually portrayed, it's odd. They're like, oh, I does Knox or Vicky Vale know him on site or anything. And so, yeah. like, well, this version of Bruce Wayne is a proper, he's a recluse. Or he's, he's, he just doesn't, he doesn't go out at all. Like, it's no one seems to really know. Like, I think later on in the film, they're actually looking for, like, pictures of him and stuff. And, like, there's just no pictures of this guy. There's just, uh, yeah. So, uh, but I think, that, you know, that, that kind of thing would have been. Whatever I'm assuming it would have been Tim Burton's input was like, no, that's not the way I want to take this character. I want him retooled to be a bit more to to my sensibilities because I, I I can get into the head of a guy who's just like a you know uh, a guy outside society and it was just a bit, oh, yeah. you know weird and different from everyone else and uh, I don't oh, know he if definitely I can, connects to that doesn't he mm, I don't know if we can get he would get into the head of like a boisterous you know. G- get about Bruce Wayne, <laughs> who's you know he's putting on a show, but uh, that is a you know he still has to put on the show of like I'm yeah you know, yeah guy man about town all that kind of stuff. So, well, you saying that he was um, he's a guy who's a recluse who doesn't really go out that ties into what we now see because we see Vicky has gone on the date with Bruce. Now it cuts to a Wayne Manor, but it's not really a date. As I say, it's at Wayne Manor. He hasn't taken her out anywhere. Yeah, he's just <laughs> come over to my house. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. I thought that was brilliant. That really said a lot about Bruce Wayne because he could have took her anywhere, <laughs> particularly as well because the establishing shot is uh, the gates ominously shutting, which is <laughs> just like, her. yeah, this is like, oh, is he planning to kill her? <laughs> Why is it so sinister? Yeah, well, I'm worried about what he's put in the uh, in that soup mm. <laughs> <laughs> on his cavernous uh, dining room. Although again, yeah, that's all stuff. I guess we, you know, we get we we get deep into the dining room next week. But uh. oh yeah, I won't go into it too much. But this day instantly feels very cold. Like mm. neither of them look too happy. Um, and like, there's even there's candles on the table that he hasn't even lit them. <laughs> well, you know, do you want to blame him or do you want to blame Alfred for that one? <laughs> <laughs> Surely that's that's an Alfred job right there. But <laughs> I'd never blame the proletariat. No. Alfred is doing his best. He's got to look after this huge mansion all on his own. He's an old man. <laughs> I don't, you know, don't, don't, don't uh, put that on you know me criticizing Alfred in any way. I forgive him if he just didn't like the guys. <laughs> but I'm just saying it probably would have been in like Bruce is just like got a little checklist under the table. He's like. <laughs> didn't light the candles that's uh <laughs> that's well, one more it? year of indentured servitude to me old man <laughs> maybe it's like a life debt like chewbacca potentially yeah 
Well, there's um, also there's another there's something here you could blame him for. Maybe, perhaps. I'm not sure who takes the orders. But uh, you can see Vicky here has got some lovely prop movie wine. Um, if someone served me a wine that thin-bodied, I'd be out of there. Come on. <laughs> look, look at that. What the hell is that supposed to be? Well, you never know. Could they, they could have done research, though, and this is actually like some you know fantastically fancy wine that you can only get yeah. in certain regions and something like that. But it's like, well... Doesn't uh, doesn't look that way on screen. <laughs> no, I mean it could be. Some people like a thin-bodied red. I am not one of them. Yeah. <laughs> but um, oh, you can imagine though, like the Bruce Wayne, the the, the Wayne wine cellar though must be amazing. But uh, oh god, uh, yeah, he has at least nine bottles of wine in his house. <laughs> so that is a very obscure Alan Partridge reference. I'll delete that. <laughs> No, there you go. Yeah, you know, it'll be it's, it's there for the people who get it. So <laughs> <laughs> all two listeners. <laughs> But um, but yeah. Uh, only other thing I have in terms of uh, action in the in the minutes, or well, just in terms of notes in general, actually. Um, mm. I just I really like uh, as Vicky's leaving uh, the newsroom. Really like her hat. I've got great time for that hat. So ah oh, yeah yeah no that is a nice hat going going back there. I'm just rewinding looking at it. Yeah, that's yeah, pretty snazzy. Like a, a that's nice, quite old fashioned again. Yeah, it's kind of like a, I don't know what type you'd call it, but it's kind of got like a, a bowler hat body but a floppy kind of rim and it's all white it's like oh, that's a nice it's a pretty yeah, swish hat i don't know my hats very well but is that like just like a female version of a bowler no well, not too not too sure but uh it does right, look very uh, similar you know fashionistas of the world uh right right <laughs> to us on uh the batman of 89 facebook listener society yeah, send us free hats we'll oh, accept. Yeah. of course um we'll go back to something to do with the date though oh um, sorry yeah <laughs> no it's fine in the original script, yet again, I've been I've been looking through for these scenes because there's been quite a lot of uh, little things I liked. This, this is the uh, beginning now, though. This is like from this point onwards, the the original Ham script oh, yeah. starts going off on a complete tangent to itself. Oh like yeah, it's it's and in many ways, and we'll get to them. Certain decisions in that script I think are actually better than are in the, the finished film, but uh, but then some are the other way. Oh yeah, let's be honest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. there's a bit of fifty fifty. Uh, but in the original script, he doesn't take it to Wayne Manor. Which, which I, I love that he takes her to a manor. I find that hilarious. Yeah. In the original script, he takes her out on a boat, mm. which, which it, that's a better date. Let's yeah. be honest, because he's showing off. He's doing the Playboy thing. Oh, come on, my yacht. Mm. Yeah, okay. Mm. Um, and in in that script, this little this little detail I quite liked. Uh, Vicky asks him if he sails, and uh, Bruce says no because he's not the physical type. Yeah. <laughs> but then Vicky watches as Bruce uh, reaches for his glass that he's drinking from. And it says, these are the words from the script. His forearm looks like a thin layer of skin over braided telephone cables. (laughs) Uh, And then Vicky says, well, you you do a very convincing imitation. Like, she's onto him. Mm, mm. She knows that he's lying. Yeah. I mean, it it could be like he's on the lines of... um... You know, Eddie Murphy in Coming to America, where it seems mm. like, oh, he's a pampered prince. But at the same time, he does have a fitness regime of some sort that's keeping him trim. Because they yeah. couldn't get around the fact that, like, oh, Eddie Murphy's, you know, relatively buff in that movie. <laughs> but uh, this one, you could, you could try to make the excuse there for Bruce Wayne. But at the same time, he's saying he's not the physical type at all. Yeah. It's like, well, who's, like, is Alfred working you out in your sleep? <laughs> What's going on? <laughs> now, that's a scene I want to see. Mm. <laughs> In the, in the script as well, the um, the date takes a bit of a weird turn because they start talking about the Corto Maltese War, which I don't find the sexiest of date chat. Mm. I'll be honest; that's probably not where I would take it. And they do both all they both they both feel very awkward about it as soon as they <laughs> get into it. It kind of ends the date and ruins the scene. <laughs> <laughs> but but then, uh... um, in the actual film, we we uh, we end with that dramatic cliffhanger. The most dramatic cliffhanger to date. Bruce looks up, gazes at Vicky, and says, "How's the soup?" Mm. <laughs> <laughs> oh, how's the soup? Say, I just can't, can't wait for next week now. <laughs> yeah, if you want to know how this soup is, make sure to tune in on Monday. I know you're going to be on tenterhooks all weekend. Yeah, uh, I've been I've been holding back on soup chat as well. I got the uh, got notes about the <laughs> about, <laughs> about the potential of the soup. But Please uh, tell me you've researched what is in the soup. Oh, no, saving it, saving it. <laughs> so, oh, save it, save it. But um, but yeah, uh, that's all the notes I've got anyway for uh for this minute, and then because we're going to be in Date Central next week, so uh, we'll oh, get all yeah. the other you know 
date tidbits from uh, from both this film, the original script, all all that stuff, and all be coming next week. So we'll be playing a bit of Barry White <laughs> down down your ear holes. It's like we're uh, going to literally try to seduce our own listeners to see if we can. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's easily done. <laughs> but yes, that is the end of minute thirty. And it is the end of the week. So uh, join us again next week. Uh, and make sure, in the meantime, to stay in touch with us on all of social media. But the best places will be the Bat Minute 89 Listeners Society, where you can join in with everybody chatting there. Post anything Bat-related. It doesn't even have to be about the movie. Just random Bat things. Even about actual Bats. That'll be fine. We do have uh, a little, a little can... subsection just called Bat Chat. Bat like... Chat. Yes, join in Bat Chat. Um, or tweet us at Batminute89. That's also the uh, the other best place. And if you rate us and review us on iTunes, we would appreciate it very, very, very much. And then, yes, join us again on Monday for Minute 31 of Batminute89. Next time, things are all bisqueness as we take stock and ask, what does boy bullionaire Bruce Wayne consume on a dark date night? Are the maybe miso-serving millionaires motives puree? A new guest noodles about with us to engage in chowder chatter on Monday. Same bat pod. Different bat minute.